All right, welcome. In this video, I'm going to be proving the mean value theorem for you. The mean value theorem says that if the function f is differentiable on a to b, closed interval a to b, then there must be a c between a and b, like an x value, where the instantaneous rate of change is equal to the average rate of change, where f prime of c is equal to f of b divided, minus f of a divided by b minus a. Okay, so let's get to work improving this. Now I'm going to use Rolle's theorem to prove to prove this theorem. But I'm going to start by drawing a little diagram first. So let me just write down, you know, f of a, f of b, and then you know maybe I'll draw a curve and I'll draw in the secant line connecting those points. All right. First, let's write the equation of the secant line. Right. We've got a point. We can figure out a slope. That means we can write an equation. We've actually got two points to work with. So I'm going to just actually use uh, a and f of a because uh, that's what I'm looking at. And so I'm going to write the equation using point slope form. So it's y minus the y coordinate of the point we know, that's y minus f of a, is equal to the slope of the secant line. We know how to compute the slope of the secant line. That's f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. Okay, slope times x minus x coordinate. So that's x minus a. Okay. But I might be a little more interested in writing this, you know, rearranging this and writing, you know, adding f of a to both sides and say y equals this plus f of a. So that's the equation for my secant line. Now I want to define a new function. Let g of x equal the difference between you know, maybe call this y, you know, my secant, and my actual function. So y minus f of x. Where, just to be clear, this y right here is the exact same as that one. Y representing the secant line. Okay. Now, I'm going to say a few things about g. I think it's... Uh, Right here, maybe I'll just say g is that vertical distance here or here or here, right? Pretty plain to see that g of a is equal to 0 and that g of b is equal to 0. Okay. Now, what I would recommend you do is, um, you know, plug in a for x right here and see what happens. Um, why would that, hold on, why would that be the case? Give me a second. Oh, yeah, yeah. if we plug in A into G, hold on, let me actually work through this because I, I didn't, if I didn't see it, you might not have either. Um, G of A is equal to Y of A, Y with A plugged in, minus F of A. But what happens when I plug A in for X into the equation for Y of X, the secant line? That becomes zero, so the first term becomes zero. Then I have zero plus f of a is f of a, and then over here I'm going to subtract f of a, and that will that be zero. All right. You can also see right here at this point there's no vertical distance between the two points. That was kind of what I was relying on at first. I was like, ah, algebraically, what's going on here? Um, I'm going to also propose that g of b does the same thing. Okay. Well, that'll be y of b, and what's going to happen when I plug in y of b? So B minus A, oh, that's interesting. So I'll have B minus A over B minus A, and that'll cancel. So I'll have F of B minus F of A plus F of A leaves me with F of B. And then, well, G of B is Y of B minus F of B. And so that's going to be zero. Okay. Now, moreover, I need to point out that G is uh, differentiable. Uh, specifically because, okay, y is a line. A line is very differentiable. It's got slope defined everywhere. It's got the same slope everywhere. And g is going to be differentiable mostly because f is differentiable. And I'm not going to have room to write that, but... Okay, g is differentiable because f is differentiable. So that means if g of a is 0 and g of b is equal to 0, I'm going to apply Rolle's theorem onto g on the interval a. So when I apply Rolle's theorem to g on the closed interval a to b, 
I get that G prime of C equals zero and that value of C is between A and B. But I can take the derivative of G, right? I can take the derivative of G pretty easily. Um, G prime is going to be, well, the slope of Y. Well, so that's going to be, it's going to be tough for me to fit in here, but it's F of B minus F of A divided by B minus A because that's the slope of Y. Now I'm going to have to make this a little smaller, I guess. And then I'm going to subtract, because it's y minus f of x, I'll subtract the derivative of f. Minus f prime of x. Right. So if g prime of c is equal to 0, and I've already got g prime equal to that number minus f prime of x, that means that, OK, hold on. Let me just copy this. Okay, if we wanted to say that g prime of c equals 0, well, what we're going to do is we're going to replace x with c. Okay, so I'll just kind of put one of these in here, and then I uh, will put c in there, wherever I see x, right? And I know that that has to be equal to 0. But now I'm just going to add f prime of c to both sides of this equation and say that this gives me that f prime of c equals f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a with c being in the open interval, whoops, c in the open interval from a to b which is what I hope to set up to show in the first place.